Pro if you want, it'll give us a view. Hey everyone, we're live. Are we live, Ivan? We're live. We have Sylvie uh, prepping the car over there because she's just that efficient person that we're not. And today we'll be doing ceramic coating. Now, should we try the mics on this? We should probably try the mics. Let's I think I'm really excited. So you do this, no, I'll do that. We promised 545, and it's 545. Exactly. Ivan is a man of his word, I can tell you that much. And you know, a little old school where 15 minutes early is on time. So if we promise 545, we are going to deliver for that. So we're about to do a ceramic coating here. Why don't you give you a sense of what we've done? We use the gold standard polishing system. We had a good time doing that. Uh, we have our wool pad, which is going to come out soon. Man, so you're looking at basically two pads and one polish with the gold standard. What's amazing about it is the gold standard polish, it has some cut to it. Long working time. Three. Easier. Two. At a Easier minimum. to take off the longer you work it. And uh, anyway, we polished up this Cadillac and what it take us like an hour total? Yeah. yeah. Very, and we very did cool. like four videos along the way. Uh, Ivan would have done it in 20 minutes if I wasn't around. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, how's the audio now that we have the, uh, the other mics on? Check one, two, ceramic coating, the star of the show, aptly titled because it is a ceramic coating for your exterior. We like to keep things simple. It's DIY. As I tell Ivan, I've been telling him a lot recently, we want to set up a system that is good enough for pros, but that we could teach someone in our family to do. Like my dad gets a new truck. Like, watch our videos and we'll show you how to do this stuff to your own vehicle. You could do what we did here, which was polish it. It was essentially a one-step polish. I was playing around with the wool pad a little bit on some deeper scratches, but essentially you're going to get this kind of gloss uh, either way. So we got already a lot of people on here. Ivan, uh, I miss you. Where'd you go, buddy? Yeah, well, I'm on the other side of the camera reading okay. the comments. Okay, I see, I see what you're doing over there. Yeah. I'm going to try to, oh my goodness, look at all these comments. Yeah. Um, turn your volume down. I gotta turn the volume down. I got this little case going on here. Can you hold this? Yeah. Oh boy. So anyways, while Nick is trying to figure out our little technical issue here, we've got the ceramic coating. Sylvie is almost done prepping the car for us. Alfred Auto Spa says, hey Nick, hey Ivan, what's up Alfred? Uh, Ridiculous says, I can't wait for to see this caddy shining and protected. Eddie Colon, what's up, fellas? Nick Stash coming in strong. Yeah. You should have added Nick Stash. We should make Nick Stash a thing. All right. Yeah. Audio's good. Audio's great. Umberto, what up, Jamie the Cleaner? Stash Gang? Yeah. We should call ourselves the Stash Gang. Eh, no. Hashtag <laughs> Stash Gang. I get goofy the longer the day goes. Remember that Seinfeld episode where uh, Morty, uh, Jerry's dad, they decide they don't want him in the office, so they set up a late afternoon meeting because old folks get tired you know, the later in the day? That's me. I get tired late in the day. A little goofy. Uh, Ivan's getting our towels ready. Have we panel prepped the caddy yet? We've been polishing it today, making content. Yeah, Sylvie's got it all panel prepped for us. And we're uh, trying a new towel today. Okay, it's red and black. Our yeah. color scheme, I love that. Low nap, great for removing polish residue. All right, Eric, Eric Hughes says hello. What's up, Eric? Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. Continue on. So anyways, the uh, low nap towel, easier for leveling a coating. And let's get going on this. Okay. So we're going to leave the camera there. Uh, you've all seen us apply coating before. We just want to talk to you guys. So I'll, I'll monitor the questions. Uh, you want me to handle wipe off? Yeah, if you want. Okay. Uh, where are you guys watching from on this fine Friday? It's a Friday night, isn't it, Ivan? It is. It's kind of what I would call a party in the DIY detail garage. There you go. Friday so, night. Ivan's like, just... Want to start on the hood? Let's start on the hood. Start on the hood. Okay. So very controversial here. I'm applying in circular motions. And one thing I've heard way too many times in my life is, oh, if you apply in circular motions, you're going to get swirls on the paint. Swirls are not caused by circles. They're actually a collection of straight lines. So when you're applying your coating, if you want to do it in circular motions and triangles and squares and octagons, whatever geometrical shape you want to do, or straight lines, by all means, have at it. Have fun. Well, Ivan, your words are profound, and your wisdom is being spread across the world, at least the country, because we've got Two Shine watching from SoCal, Eric Hughes watching from Kentucky, and uh, Eric Hughes says, Mr. Miyagi and Daniel's son, wax on, wax off. Pretty much. Okay, yeah, wax yeah, on, wax right. off. I can do this. Oh my now, gosh, that's so slick. One thing with our coating, if you put too much on, it actually looks like it's sweating. 
So that's a sign that, oh, I put too much on. And in the beginning, when we're just priming the pad, that can happen. But as we go along, we'll be putting less and less on. A lot of people want to know how many drops do I put on the pad when I'm priming it. Maybe tell people what priming the pad is and then how many drops to put on it. Well, the, uh, the correct amount is enough, but there's no real uh, you know, dedicated, it has to be 12 and 6 thirds, you know, which actually would be 15, but, uh, or 14, but anyways. 12 and 6 thirds, have you ever heard anyone say that before? Hey, there's a bank around here that's uh, 5 thirds. All right, we third, want... third, fifth, or something like that. So Edmund uh, Edmund Mendez says hi from Hollister, California. HM Auto Detailing, rainy Toronto. LOL. And then we got Jamie the Cleaner, the goat on yep. TikTok. What exactly. up, Jamie the Cleaner? Hashtag Cleaner Stash. Wait, Stash Gang. I'm really into the mustache. If you guys can't tell. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jamie, what's up, Eddie? Col how do I say Eddie's last name? Cologne. Cologne. Eddie Cologne. What's up, brother? That's how I say it anyways. I don't know about you. But. Who, who here? Comment down below if you guys have purchased the gold standard polishing system. It is now live on DIYDetail.com. Love to see everybody out there supporting our relatively new company, but we are growing. We put a lot of R&D into this thing uh, before you guys saw us publicly launch in the fall. Ivan, we're doing the, uh, the front grill, front bumper here. Yeah, front bumper while we're at the front end here. And... Uh, if you like the camera work, give a shout out to Sylvie. Instead of having a fixed camera location, now we have the camera moving around for us. Sylvie, uh, you're amazing, thank you. And then uh, let's, we, should we do it over here so in the light we can see the, the coating kind of? Yeah, just let me finish the front bumper. Be applied and then? And then we'll get a close up of the coating being applied. Okay, Good um, idea, Bees Landscaping says, what's up? What's up, Bees? I haven't seen you on here for years. Um, Tom Kirby says, Houston, oops, will Nick come to MTE? We'd like to see him at the event. Ivan and Nick are both going to be at MTE, Mobile Tech Expo. Yep. You guys excited? Comment below if you guys are going to Mobile Tech. Now, we'll bring the camera over here, show the people something. Ivan, are you speaking at Mobile Tech this year? Yes, I am. Where, 8 a.m. Thursday morning. Okay. How to, how to hire employees. So, okay. Nick left what's commonly known as a high spot here. So, this is a high spot. Luckily... It's been a while. Can we, has, a, can we get a little light on there? Does that help or no? No. no. But can you, yeah, we can see the high spot there. Okay. So it hasn't been on there long enough that we can probably just do this. And the high spot is gone. But if your high spot has been on a long time, then how do you remove it? Uh, you just put a little bit of coating on your applicator and then you go right to that spot where the high spot is that you couldn't buff off with a dry towel. Put a little bit of coating in. And then you're just thinking to yourself, I'm an artist, right? I'm just trying to blend. So you take the coating applicator with a little coating on it, put it on the high spot, get it wet, immediately buff off with a dry towel. Right. And that's how it works. And you're gonna is there have a to... science behind that, Ivan? I just, I just know that works. Like, yeah, what, what is happening at the, a chemistry level? The ceramic hasn't had the time to cure, so therefore you're reapplying it, you're reliquifying. But it hadn't going. cured yet, but it's still a high spot. Don't forget the headlights. Okay. I oh, get really excited asking Ivan questions. How are you liking that towel, Nick? I like it. Okay. I mean, I've tried a lot of towels in my day, and uh, I like this one. It's good. I love short nap for removing coating, but... Actually, wrong oh, term. We're leveling the coating. We're not removing it. I always use the wrong word. Not the wrong word. It's, it's common in the industry, but right. we're actually leveling the coating. We're not actually removing it. I know my job is to talk about this stuff, but sometimes I have this feeling where I'm like, I just know how it works. Like, let me show you, but... You are the encyclopedia, Ivan, so I appreciate you. So we wanted to show the application process here. We'll do it on this fender. We'll get the, the light there. Okay. HM Auto Detailing says, Ivan, the living legend. I'm not a legend. I'm okay. just an old guy. I think the camera's a little shaky is what they're saying. We're yeah, trying. No, we're trying. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Detailing made simple. Chilling, brother. Just a super rainy week this week out here. We know what that's like for mobile detailers. It's rough. Actually, are you mobile? He seems to have a shop space. Um, MB says, can you ceramic coat outside if someone don't have a luxury of a close parking? Definitely. It's a myth in the industry that you can't ceramic coat outside. You just have to be a little more careful. Shane D says, I bought two of the ceramic coatings but haven't gotten the pad and polish yet. Okay, Shane, well, we just released this yesterday and it will be coming out. Yeah. Probably, we, we shipped out a bunch today. So right. um, if you order the... Uh, the gold standard polishing system, it should get to you shortly. And Mr. McGurk, 
If yes, we sir. want our, uh, our live stream to be able to go on, you might want to turn the light off on your phone. The battery's going to last longer. I just like the light. I like, <laughs> I like the attention, you know? Yeah, there you go. Keep it shiny. Keep it bright. Um, so here you can see the coating is starting to flash and get, it sort of looks like an oil slick on water. Can you guys see that? You guys let us know if you get, seeing the high spots with the, with the coating is always difficult. The lighting has to be just oh. right. How about like this? Anyway, if you can't see it, it's sort of sweating right here. Yeah. On the fender, or on the quarter. Then from there, we level it with the towel. Now this Cadillac, you can see all the stone chips here. It's got a little over 150,000 miles. It's well loved, well used, and gets driven regularly. Ivan Eric Hughes says, starting a mobile detailing business in March, hired a business coach. Excellent. Thanks to Detailers Business Academy for the help. Do you know who that is? Not personally, but yes. <laughs> the, I, no, I mean, do you know who Detailers Business Academy is? Oh, yeah. Uh, That's Ivan. Yeah. Um, I'm just answering questions. Ivan, Ivan's focused on the coding. I'm focused on, I'm focused on the people. All right. Ryan L. says, was buying the kit during last night's live. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, from Alfred Maine, Alfred Auto Spa says, ordered it last night. We're talking about the gold standard system. Um, awesome, guys. Love that. Uh, Two Shine says, haven't done a ceramic coating yet. Only got two paint enhancements under my belt. Okay, Ivan. So we were thinking about this, right? We're a DIY line. Like, can I teach my dad to polish his car? If you've done two paint enhancements, right? Um, wh what mentality do you want folks to have, Ivan, when, when they haven't done a coating yet, they've done a couple light polish sessions, um, walk me through kind of a, a emotionally, kind of coach me as to how I should feel, how to approach this. So if you can apply a wax, you can apply a coating. It's just that simple. People overcomplicate the idea of a coating. They think it's some mythical creature that's very difficult to work with and apply. Couldn't be further from the truth. Our coating is so easy to level, you guys. I'm not even kidding. And, and you know so exactly slow. where you've been and where you haven't been because the, uh, the like, coating, if you... Uh, like, I kind of watched you, but I'm just looking for the... I guess, what is it? The sweat? The... Yeah, it's sort of sweat. So I'm putting it actually a little too much on here. But the... Um, you get sort of the flashing rainbow effect, and then it starts going back to clear. And when it's gone back to clear, then you know it's time to level the coating. And we're not trying to remove coating, like we mentioned before. We're actually just leveling it. So the towel that Nick is using, by the time we're all done the vehicle, it's going to still be dry. For me as a, as a longtime detailer, I kind of know when it's time to wipe the coating off. You know, yeah. I can tell. But can you give people an estimate of how long do I let it sit on the paint before I, before I um, not remove? Right, level. Level, level. What are you telling for a time estimate, Ivan? 30 seconds to two minutes. Now, the higher the humidity, the faster the coating is going to cure. It is temperature dependent, for sure. Well, more humidity dependent than okay. temperature. Unless it's like 30 degrees. Yeah. If it's, uh, you know, you don't want to apply coating below 50 degrees, and you don't really want to apply it above 110 or so. Oh, that looks nice. The mirror. Oh, you did this side as well? Yeah. I got a little excited. Haven't, haven't looked at the comments in a bit. There you go. So I guess Sylvie's going to be following me while you're reading the comments. Okay, I like that. Um, MB says, guys, you've helped me a lot. Thank you for your time and help. Thank you, MB. Appreciate you. Devandra95 says, hi from New York. MB says, some shops say that you cannot ceramic coat outside because the dust particles will not let you work as you're supposed to do. Ivan. Yeah, uh, yeah there's as many dust particles inside a shop as there are outside. Leave a vehicle in a shop for an hour, see how much dust is on the surface. I mean, on the other hand, you're not going to get stuff blown in the wind. I mean, on a windy day, it can kind of make your life hell. Right, but it's not like we're applying paint. That's true. As long as the panel is clean when we start applying the coating, we're good. Sorry, guys. I'm going to do a quick little zoom out here. Yeah. Sorry for the quick shake. So basically... That is Sylvie, Ivan's lovely wife. Hi, Sylvie. Yeah. The star of the show. If you think Ivan's the guy, it's really Sylvie, but that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, Mike C, man, you got COVID, unfortunately, but this is the best way to relax. Thank you, Mike. Hope you feel better, brother. 
Says we'll put in a couple orders starting hopefully tonight. I can tell you, I got COVID after SEMA, Ivan. Yeah. And uh, man, it was a it was a bear. I I thought, hey, COVID's over, whatever. And it wasn't so much the first week when I was really sick. It was like three weeks of fatigue after. Yeah. So I have empathy for you guys out there if you're getting sick. I got two small kids too. Hey, uh, Mike asked, can it be layered? Oh, no, Ryan L says, can it be layered? Yes, it can. Uh, my pref my preferred way of layering it is one layer now, one layer in three years. <laughs> but uh, if you absolutely want to layer the coating, uh, give it you know four or five hours. Um, Mr. Colon asks, when can I full send, right? And I think he says 24 hours, which I always feel comfortable with. You know, in a pinch, you could full send this in an hour. Yeah. Because we talked to our chemist, and he says it's, it's is it fully cured after an hour? No. No. Uh, basically, after one hour, it's like if you're working with silicone. You know, you, you put silicone on, around your bathtub, right? Well, I've never put silicone around my okay. bathtub. Well, <laughs> a lot of people have, Nick. I'm going to so, make sure you're still in frame. Hold on. Yeah. So you're putting silicone around your bathtub, it skins, meaning that you can, you know, if you touch it, you're not going to get silicone all over yourself in about half an hour. It cures in, or it's, you can put it into water an hour later, and then it fully cures after six or seven days. The coating is the same. So if it's sunny, if it's a sunny day out, as soon as you're done applying it, you can drive away. Not a problem. After that, if it's raining or snowing, give it at least an hour. And then you've got a protective skin on the coating. You don't want to use any chemicals for seven days. Did that answer your question, Eddie? Sorry, Nick behind the camera here. Just a little bit of movement trying to get Ivan and Sylvie in frame. I'm doing it for the people. Doing it for the people, folks. Um, Eric Hughes says, can you reapply ceramic coating on a year-old existing coating? It was a two-year coating. You yeah, can, definitely. absolutely, or yeah. you could just do a light polish, right, where you're not applying pressure. You've got a little bit of the gold standard, uh, you know, polish on your pad. Ivan likes the one spray. We've got a sprayable polish, pad washer, damp pad. You want to explain the, the polish system, Ivan? So the gold standard polishing system has been uh, in development for a long time. And basically what the gold standard polishing system is, we have a sprayable polish, and for now, we have basically a single step waffle pad. This uh, Cadillac, we did with a combination of a three inch DA, a 15 millimeter, a 21 millimeter, actually an eight millimeter DA, and a rotary. Le pare-choc, la moitié. You hear and a little French action going on there? Yeah, exactly. Ivan, the folks may not know this, uh, from Quebec, is that right? Quebec yeah. or near Quebec? No, uh, well, Quebec is a province, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you it's go. also a city. All right, so you folks may not know that English is your second language. Exactly. That's pretty incredible. When did you start learning English? Like when you were Two in or school? Three. Yeah. Okay. In school, but uh, but I mean, most folks from Quebec like is English their second language, or is it sort of fluidly both fluencies? Uh, English is the second language for most people, like for Sylvie. Okay. She can speak English. She's just shy about it. But I don't think most people would ever know that English was your second language. No. That's incredible. I think that if, if anyone else has a second language and speaks as well as Ivan, uh, it'd be kind of a miracle. Because, I mean, that is like true fluency. I don't know. I took another language. I'm proficient, but I'm not, I'm not fluent. In well, Ivan's head, he's like, Nick, get back to the, the yeah. comments. Eric Q says, I heard you were working on a product like Formula 4 Spray Wax for preventing water spots. Can you talk about this? I don't... Well, <laughs> not, I don't even know what Formula 4 is. I don't either. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, any spray wax will actually help in preventing water spots. Because what happens when you have an, a natural carnauba wax, your um, minerals are attacking that and going into that. But since the wax fluffs off very quickly, the mineral doesn't have time to get into the... Um, Where'd the camera go? The pores of the clear coat? Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have time to get into the pores of the clear coat. It just got, gets on the wax and eventually gets fluffed off the wax. But yeah, we are working on a lot of different projects at the moment. So. Two Shine says, would, would ceramic damage tinted windows? Nope. Just don't put it on the inside, obviously, yeah. of your... Coat. Right. And you never actually want to put anything hydrophobic on the inside of your windows. So the inside glass, you don't want hydrophobic because it can promote fogging. 
And we and don't want foggy windows, windows when we're driving. Okay, John Anderson says, can you top ceramic coat with ceramic gloss for a sacrificial layer to protect the coating during cure? I mean, seven days after, John, put ceramic gloss on after your first wash. But no, you don't want to mess with, um, you know, I know there have been previous systems, you know, I haven't worked on one where it's after an hour. Did it, no. The coating doesn't need that. And actually, you, you risk damaging the coating by doing that. So. so the answer is less product. We just want you to do this. Panel prep the paint, put the coating on. I could apply our coating in my sleep. I mean, this is just. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're already hitting that. I yeah. just wanted to feel useful, Sylvia. I just wanted to swipe on the paint <laughs> a little bit. The Sam Squatch says, howdy, good to see everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Yourself as well, sir. Uh, Eric Q says, it's a rinse aid they use in automatic car washes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, MB says, on a very soft paint, like. Asian cars, how do you approach it? It becomes very sticky. What's your method? No, I'm no, struggling. Uh, MB, so I can empathize with this. Um, about a year and a half ago, I worked on this really old Jaguar. Now, I haven't can contribute to this, but I want to share my story first. And uh, I contacted Jason Rose at Rupes, and I said, what is going on? And he said, oh, that's, uh, was it sticky paint? Yeah. Uh, and he says it's, it's sort of common in the Philippines, and, you know, I guess certain areas of that, you know, part of the world. Um, and I had the darndest time trying to figure it out because you would like polish a section and then it would leave sort of like a halo on the left and then a halo on the right. He said, so what he told me is clean pad and instead of doing like four or five passes, try just one pass is what, exactly. is what he yeah. said. And another thing folks can sometimes do with really sticky, finicky paint is sometimes they'll polish with water, which I didn't find to be super effective, but once I heard that, okay, I've polished this section with my normal process, I can't seem to get it the way I want it to, you just clean your pad, apply your polish, just try one pass. And it, it's a tough thing, man. I think if you do it all every day, it gets easier. But I mean, we don't see a ton of sticky paint, do we, Ivan? No, and you know, clean pads are the key to just about any successful polish job. So MB, uh, let us know if you have further questions, but some of that, learning happens on the job and then when you start to get some of these solutions it can really change the way you polish paint. So this is this is happening for a reason my friend because now you're going to learn some ways to do this and next time you get that kind of paint or if it's not even that sticky but you're still struggling uh, you'll have a solution for it. That's what it was for me. It, it paid off on a couple other details I did uh, coatings. Luis Mera says when applying ceramic coat should we cover as well any decals or avoid them? Now you want to you want to ceramic coat your decals um, you know, during paint correction, if you're worried that your polisher is going to bump into the decal, a lot of people will put paint uh, around their decals, but with the gold standard Not paint, system... tape. Oh, tape, sorry. Yeah. Long <laughs> Painter's day. tape, yeah. Painter's tape. Um, but, you know, with the gold standard system, there's no dusting, and you can polish trim, too. So, Ivan, today, you were hitting little decals with a rotary, which is such a great technique. Yeah. Because you get right into there, and the, and the pad just keeps spinning. Yep, exactly. All right. You guys are doing a beautiful job. I'm just standing here. I'm talking. You're working. Eric Hughes says the gold standard polish. Do you need a panel prep before coating or can you coat without panel prepping? You definitely want to, Eric, panel prep after coating, sorry, panel prep after polishing and before coating. Yeah, so technically you can go straight to the, the coating if you want to, but really yeah. it's not, a, not the safest way. It's just not gonna last as long, right? Well, no, our, our polish doesn't leave anything behind. So we do have a clean panel, but using the panel prep is gonna make it even cleaner. It's gonna make, it just gives you extra insurance. Absolutely. But and it's a great panel, polish before it's coating. Step for, to inspect. Yeah, it's your last chance to inspect the paint. That's such a great, Sylvie has all the answers, right? It's like, if you wanna really see what the panel looks like, just to triple check your work. Yep. Panel prep, wipe down. I like to spray panel prep on a towel, not on the paint directly, and gently buff into the paint. Um, okay, first from Puerto Rico, Humberto says, I do Spanish, English, Portuguese, and some French. That's amazing. Very cool. Hope to meet you someday, my friend. Um, the Sam Squatch says, I would panel prep in case you miss polish residue. This way the coating bonds properly. Exactly. Um, yes, Tug says, Tug R says, not sure if this was discussed, but is this the DIY coating? It absolutely is. It's DIY detail ceramic coating. Can I show them the bottle? It's available on our website. It is now, pro grade and it's easy to use, folks, like all of our products. Now, we've had a bit of a change. Uh, actually, the change will be happening tonight at midnight. But this is the last you'll see of this bottle. 
Just trying to hold it in frame, Ivan. Okay. There you go. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. I just, okay. So this is the last you'll see of the 50 milliliter bottle. We had a lot of people saying, that's too much. So we're reducing the price, but also reducing the size. So we're going down to a 30 milliliter bottle, but instead of $89.95, you'll be paying $49.95. So yes, $49.95, it's a great price for folks who have never coated their vehicle before. You know, there's no excuse at that price point. Yeah. I'm telling you the quality of this coating, it is of the quality that we could be charging a lot more. But we're really just trying to get folks get to use our product because I know you're going to fall in love with it. Um, another question comes from Stephen. I just ordered the polish kit today. Too bad I can't use it yet. Bad weather here in Long Island. What's up, Stephen V? I believe your name is Caesar. I don't want to out you there on, uh, on the YouTube. Um, so yeah, that is the DIY detail ceramic coating. Effective at midnight tonight. The price is going down to $49.95, so you're going to love that. If you haven't tried it, I highly suggest it. I think for pros out there, you could... Here's what I love about our coating, Ivan. Yeah. It reduces the stress. Now, if you're a pro out there, you know what I'm talking about. Long paint correction, and then you want to reward yourself by applying the coating, but it's so difficult. It's like peanut butter on the paint. You can't remove it. This is going to be the best way to finish out a ceramic coating job. It is so easy. If you get a high spot, you can go back and wipe it down. It's easy. You work one panel at a time. We're not talking about two by two sections. So that to me is reducing the stress on the last part of a big correction and coating job. Why I love our coating. And I think pros will love it too. And how long have we been live, Nick? We've been live in a distracted way, I think. Doing a little this, a little of that um, for about 30 minutes. It's 5.12, 4.45 is when we started uh, Central Time. Right, so I have uh, this half of the windshield to do, and we're done coating the car. Feels a little sticky here. I feel like this is. Pre I think you need to do the rear windshield too. Oh, okay. Thought rear windshield. Did. Yeah. Rear window. Rear glass. Uh, rear glass. Um, MB says some shops. Oh, we're way back there. MB, appreciate you, man. Uh, okay, Shane D. Oh, loves detailing supplies. What up, Graham in Naples, Florida? Says nice mustache. I believe uh, Graham told me I had like a. Burt Reynolds, is that a guy? Yes, you don't Burt know Reynolds. who Burt Reynolds is? No, I just want to make sure the name didn't get butchered. Uh, the yeah, Burt Reynolds it. stash. I, 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 you know, I've, I've, I personally, I think it's Eddie Mer er, Freddie Mercury. But, Freddie yeah. Mercury, all yeah. right. Uh, Eric Hughes, now Shane D says, why are waffle pads more common on rotaries than DA, Mr. Ivan? Ivan loves talking about waffles. So, because more old guys use rotaries. Uh, the... The waffle pad actually is great on both a DA and a rotary, uh, but on a rotary, it just gives you such a better user experience. It makes the polishing so much easier and more fun. Can you use a waffle pad and perhaps the gold standard polish on a rotary? Ad? Definitely. Uh, half of this car was finished with a rotary. So, What's your favorite rotary right now, the Milwaukee cordless? Uh, the Flex corded. I'm still a corded guy. The cordless is nice, but it's a little bulky and heavy. So, so this is what Ivan used today. I hadn't seen it before, but it's the Milwaukee uh, Rotary. It's all cordless. We have the cordless Milwaukee. I like them. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, uh, I can't even say they're lacking, that the backing plate doesn't spin as much as I want. I don't know. They are heavy. I like not having a cord. Yeah. Um, but like you said, the Flex, what is it, the PE14? The PE14-150 Rotary oh, corded so is just smooth. Yeah. It's light and smooth and sturdy. and It's a scalpel. It's just a beautiful tool, well engineered. Yep. Eddie Colon says, you should keep the two ounce for the detailing shops, it's a better value. Eddie will talk, my friend. Yeah, there's a... We wanna, we wanna make sure we're meeting detailers where they're at and, uh, and we just, just want folks to use it. And just so you know, we have more stuff coming. We had a meeting today where we talked about some of our new projects, and yeah, it's exciting. Um, so you're a little bit cut off there. I need you, I need you to just have a little patience, folks. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna move. I'm gonna back that thing up, as a hip hop song once said. There we go. All right, I'm gonna just a little bump, and how about this? A Friday night, 51 people watching live yeah. on this January 2023 evening. Well, um, while we're at it, let's go to the door jams. Caesar says the wool pad 
you're talking about. Will that work with the gold standard polish? Definitely. That's like saying, do bears go to the bathroom in the woods? <laughs> I'm just, what am I talking about, Evan? Yeah. You're doing door jams. David oh. Cruz says thanks for the live. David, I would say thank you for watching, my friend. I've got the camera on a tripod, so trying to... Can you give me a little visual of this, Ivan? You're, uh, you're blocking the way for the people. All right, so why are we doing the door jams? Walk me through when I do door jams and why. Yeah, it makes them so much easier to clean, like anything else. And uh, it's just a nice presentation. Now, as a hobbyist, you want to do your door jams. As a professional, you're doing door jams if the customer is paying you to do door jams. Really? Yeah. How do you upsell a door jam to a customer? Like, how do you bring that up in a conversation? Uh, door jams are $100 extra. <laughs> okay. Hey, detailing made simple. I love yes. this. So you guys, this. yeah. Hold on. You're, you're, we're getting the background in here. We need to. So what? Sylvie, Sylvie the, the tripod here is, uh, is a little short, so I'm trying to get everybody in. Okay. We want to get you in. You're the star. Um, so Detailing Made Simple says, you guys don't put enough credit on your panel prep. It's super lubricious on paint, but on glass, it's grabby like traditional IPAs. No. You guys a chemist, any ideas? Yeah. I don't yeah, know quite no, what the uh, question uh, is. IPA, it has a bit of IPA in it. That's one of the components, but definitely we were going for lubrication. I like lubricious. That's a nice word. Lubricious, right? Yeah. It's a very nice word there, Socrates. But anyways, we, want, we wanted lubrication. That's part of a panel prep. And if you're just using IPA, you're losing out. You're not doing the right thing. You're too short, my friend. Well, you're moving. Your, I, can't, I would have to do the whole thing. You know, it's been adjusted. Well, here, and, we'll do this. All right, I'll take this off. Well, there, now put the legs down. OK. All right, folks, you're going to have to institute. Yeah, it's going to shake a little bit. Just do it quickly. All right, it's like guys. pulling a Band-Aid off. Sorry, we're getting a little shake action, but we're doing this for you. It's like a little sacrifice on the front end. Yeah, there, we'll put those two legs down. All right, close your eyes, guys. Close your there eyes. There you go. Oh, okay, and three, two, one. We're stabilized. We'll okay. get the shake gone. Okay. Oh, we got to do the rims. Eddie Cologne says don't forget the rims. Yeah, that's an upsell, too. Yeah, I used to throw all this in. Um, okay, John Anderson asked a good question. When would you use your metal ceramic coating over the exterior ceramic coating? When we're putting it on raw metal. So very easy to say, these wheels are chrome. We could actually use the metal ceramic on these. These are stainless steel pieces. We could use the metal ceramic on those, but the metal ceramic is really meant for softer metals. So aluminum, copper, brass, uh, any metal like that, you definitely want to use the metal ceramic. Now, on stainless, you can go either way. On chrome, you can go either way. But on a softer metal like aluminum, you definitely want to use the metal ceramic. All right, Eric, you've reached your limit of questions, my friend. No, I'm kidding. No, no. Eric Hughes says, Ivan, these newer vehicles have what's called acoustic windshields. Yes. That reduce noise. Is there any difference from polishing windshields on newer cars versus vintage cars? No. Well, depending on the vintage. If you're, you know, back before safety glass was a thing, so back in the 30s, when it was plate glass, then yeah, you don't want to be really polishing on that. But if we're talking, you know, 50s, 60s, 80s, 90s, uh, there's no difference whatsoever. The acoustical glass just means there's an extra layer of PVB inside the glass, or polyvinyl butyl. Poly so, what is polyvinyl butyl? So if you look at the way a windshield is made, it's a layer of glass, a layer of PVB, or polyvinyl butyl, and another layer of glass. The acoustic ones, they made thinner glass, and you have three layers of glass and two layers of PVB. The encyclopedia, the walking encyclopedia, folks. There you have it. Um, Love Detailing Supply says hit him with the sauce. And we're going to hit him with the sauce, the gloss sauce. Not ceramic gloss today. Oh my gosh, that's so slick. The DIY detail ceramic coating for exteriors. Oh, this is so easy to apply, guys, as a pro. I mean, you know, when, when customers come to the shop, do they care necessarily what brand of coating? I feel like it's, you sell yourself as a, as a detail company and you tell them that, that they're getting a ceramic coating, right? You don't need to say, well, it's a one year or a seven year. I, 
tell no. me how you coach your detail clients on, on brands of coatings and, and how to sell different durabilities and all that. So the brand isn't important. Your customer is not buying a brand. The customer is buying your service. The customer is buying your time and your expertise, your knowledge. So you want to apply a coating that you want to apply. David Cruz says, uh, so immediately wipe after application. We said 30 seconds to two minutes. I mean, you can wipe immediately if you want. I'm gonna wait the 30 seconds and make sure that the coating gets a chance to bond properly. Right. But um, the higher the humidity, the faster you wanna activate it. Yeah, like if you are getting high spots that are tough to get off, try wiping almost immediately. Um, I've had issues with that in Utah where very hot days, we run into issues like that. And apparently, Ivan, according to Eric Hughes, I'm lucky to get to hang out with you. Hey. Hey. You know, I'm, I'm lucky lu to get to hang out with Nick. Hey, I'm lucky to hang out with you. I'm lucky to be in a position where we are, you know, partners in a company together. And honestly, guys, we're lucky to be alive. We get one shot at yeah. this life. And uh, we woke up breathing today. So I think there's more right than wrong going on in our lives. Now, just because you don't see me doesn't mean I'm not here. Don't worry. Ivan's over there doing work. Um, makes windshield break without exploding. Is he talking about your... Uh... Yeah, so the polyvinyl butyl basically keeps the windshield together in case of an accident. Oh, okay. You said that earlier. Got it. Or maybe you did. I was focused on the camera, I believe. Folks, what are you doing on this Friday night? You guys uh, hanging out with us all night? Or you, you got plans to go out with the missus or have a good time? Play Yahtzee? Let us know. Um, Ivan, what's the most fun thing you've done today? <sighs> All of it. All of it? Yeah. Fun is just part of being alive. I feel like work and life for you just blend together. Like your passion is cars, detailing, kind of, if you weren't doing this, I don't even, like, what would your life be? Like, I have no this idea. Is it, this is it, man. Yeah. I worked one week in my life. Yeah. That was the only week that I worked, and you want to get that wheel, please. Where did you work? I worked in a factory for a week, and let's just say my hat's off to every factory worker in the world. What did you do in the factory? Uh, it was a printing factory, and I was running the, the printer, like the, the big printing mill. Okay. And uh, that was the only time I worked in my life. The rest of the time, if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, the day that what I'm doing feels like a job, is the last day that I do it. Really? Yeah. Ivan's a boss like that. Two weeks notice on day one. Um, Alfred Autospot says, getting ready to detail my sister-in-law's Explorer. What color paint is it, sir? Let us know. Uh, Luis Mera says, living in Canada, our cars are covered super in salt. Exposed <laughs> to the elements of road salt. <laughs> yeah. What pre-wash solution would you recommend to help removing the salt? prior to a contact wash? I love this question, Ivan. You can answer yes. it, I'll grab the product. So what you want to use is water spot remover. Oh, there's the camera now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, you want to use our water spot remover. That is by far the best way of removing that salt. And you'll see the beading just snap right back. If you have a coated car, it's exceptional. I love this stuff. I did a video where I was standing outside that in the Utah snow recently. And the vehicle had no Make protection on it whatsoever. Wipe and talk. Oh, I'm wiping and talking. <laughs> don't want high spots in a door jam. But you'll never see them, Ivan. Well, you still don't want high spots in a door jam. But we could just reapply with the coating applicator with a little coating on it. Yeah. See, this is our banter where I like to just challenge him at every turn. Just a little, you know. I'm just curious. I like to have fun. Um, it's a collegial banter. Yes. <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, this is nice inside. I like this. Yeah, Ooh. they're a nice car. I like and this, this one interior. has a really nice engine. How many horsepower? Uh, over 800 to the wheels. No big deal. Yeah, it's enough. All right. Al Daly says, is anyone on the fence about getting interior ceramic? Don't. It won't disappoint. Yeah, our interior ceramic is, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but that stuff is powerful. It's amazing. Uh, Stephen V says, any other products coming in gallon? anytime soon. I mean, the only one that folks had asked about that I feel like isn't in a gallon, and I think there's a couple that aren't still, but the one we had asked about was interior ceramic in a gallon. Yeah. Um, I think we were still testing to see how that holds up in a gallon. 
Yeah, the, the plastic of the gallons isn't the same as the bottles. So we have uh, PET bottles for our regular bottles, but the gallons are HDPE or LDPE, low density polyethylene. And some of the chemicals don't react well to LDPE. So. Yeah, this owner is a car guy, you can tell, because he's got, he got a couple of microfibers in the trunk, and then he's got one up here in a very clean interior, which I think is pretty, pretty impressive, right? Like, yep. most people don't have an interior this clean. So, hats off to you, sir. Did I do the rim face already? Maybe let us know. In the I have no in idea. In the live video. So, um, uh, Sylvia is going to do us the honor of starting the car, just so we can ooh. hear the beautiful sound. Oh. Here we go, folks. Yeah. Not your grandpa's caddy. No. And now it's going to look so good with this yeah. coating on it. You got so, the roof on this side as well? All okay. done. The whole all vehicle done. is done. We used maybe eh, 10 milliliters. So and we're selling it now in... A 30 milliliter. Right, which is yeah. easily enough to do two sedans. Right. So we did wheel faces. We did door jams. We did the glass. We did everything on this vehicle with ceramic coating. It is now protected. It's coated. It sounds spectacular. Fantastic combination of both words at the same time. And just looks amazing. You know, Eddie Clone asked, are any of our products going to be available in five gallons? <sighs> These are discussions. I mean, we're never yeah. done. Like, this is a no. living organism, DIY detail. So we're human beings uh, in the business. Like, if folks want five gallons, let us know. But uh, the, the issue yeah. with five-gallon containers is really shipping. So yeah. is yeah. what? The, the issue with five-gallon containers is shipping. That is the uh, biggest issue, the shipping cost. So basically the five gallon, we'd have to raise the price. And it's better for you to actually not stock in five gallons. You want to stock, you know, coatings, if you're a professional detailer, you want to have 10 coatings on hand at all times. So you order 10, you get down to five, you order 10 more. That way you're guaranteed to have them in stock. You don't have to pay for overnight shipping because, oh, I'm doing a coating tomorrow and I don't have a coating. No. Especially when the coating bottle that we're selling is forty nine ninety five. Yeah, or ninety nine. Right, but when you're looking at things like tire dressing or all clean, all clean, you dilute it thirty to one or you know fifteen to one. That gives you fifteen gallons or thirty gallons of product, depending on what you're doing with it. You don't need to buy it in five gallon containers. That way, you've always got fresh product. You don't have product that's been sitting on your shelf for a year, has the cap been opened, unopened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I ran a very big detailing shop. We bought nothing in five gallon containers. Really? All in ones. Our whole detailing setup, the, you know, some people have stock rooms, we had a stock shelf. That was it. I'm just gonna, the exhaust fumes are a little stinky in there, you know? <laughs> Nick needs a little break. A little fresh H2O. Oh, oh. come on, it smells good. Wait, unburnt, hi un unburnt hydrocarbons, oh. Um, all right, we have a few questions. Just yep. rapid fire coming into the DIY detail comment section. Um, I'm gonna rinse this. Um, oh my gosh, I just saw it here. Uh, okay, Eddie Cologne just wants rinseless and ceramic gloss in five gallons. David Cruz says, so the interior ceramic is applied on all plastic trim and leather? Absolutely, interior yeah. ceramic uh, and carpeting. Carpeting, you name it. Cloth. Just not interior windows. Yeah, cloth, corduroy, whatever. Now, we're done ceramic coating this vehicle. We have our applicator. We're not gonna throw the applicator away. But isn't it ruined forever, Ivan? No, you put it in your wash bucket. And whether that wash bucket be rinseless or incredible suds, the surfactants in there are gonna break down the uncured ceramic. Same reason we tell you don't wash the car for a week, we can tell you put the applicator in the rinseless and you're good to go. What, 30 minutes and then you drop it in your, uh, in your washer, uh, yep. fragrance-free detergent, uh, cold gentle cycle, and then exactly an applicator, not necessarily, but yeah, I like to air dry all my towels and if I can. And your towel that you used to level the coating, same thing. Uh, Eric Hughes says, I ceramic coat my watch in phones, glass, screen, protector, LOL. Yep. Yeah, I do the same thing. When you have extra coating on your applicator, I'm gonna sit down on this chair. Ah. 
I'm feeling it right now. Uh, when you have extra coating on your applicator, why not? The shoes, the watch, the phone. Yep. You know, the cart. Uh, your your. Uh, you know what I like ceramic coating is bathroom glass. Yeah. Because <coughs> you always get you know spray up from the water and the faucet, and it's nice to have that easier to clean. All right, what else we got? In focus photography says, okay, I've used some coatings and I get a headache in like 30 seconds. Have to put on a respirator. That's not a comfortable experience wearing no. that and glasses. Right. Uh, with our coating, there's no odor to it. There's no smell. Unless you're actually, you know, uh, Hawaii Detailing, uh, bless his heart, great channel. If you haven't seen the channel, he's a lot of fun to it watch. It's hilarious. Actually, Eddie is the same way. So Eddie Cologne is the same way. The Sniff Nest. Not always a good thing to do a, stiff, a sniff test with detailing chemicals. Like taking it right to the face. Yeah. 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 No, but, uh, not the wisest uh, way of uh, doing things. But Maybe do a waft. So you open the ball and just waft it to you. Yeah. That's about as far as I go. But I would say our, our chemical line smells as good or if not better than any other out there. Yeah. Because this is like legit stuff, guys. I know it's DIY, but it's professional grade. It's not some marketing company who decided we want to start a detail company. Like... We're detailers, no, yeah. right? This is for professional detailers and do-it-yourselfers, but it has the smell that's gonna sort of entice anybody in there. Right. So, yeah, the smells of our stuff are really good, especially Incredible Suds. Um, so, uh, oh, this is funny. Ryan L says, when does the in-person DIY Detail Academy start? That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Uh, it's gonna happen, but not till spring anyways. You heard it here first, it's gonna happen. I keep yeah. telling Ivan I wanna do that, so yeah. apparently it's gonna happen, love that. All right, Terry, I got some good news for you. Terry Michaels. Yes. There's gravity to this comment, so I want you to just feel it as, okay. I, as I say it. Watching from Australia where it's 10.30 a.m. and 25 Celsius, great live stream. All we need is to get DIY down under. Ivan's got an announcement for you. DIY is on its way. It's on the ocean. It's going down under. Yes. Uh, Car Care Co., they will be carrying the, and their distributors throughout the, uh, throughout the country. So I think they've got 12 or 13 distributors. Every one of them will have DIY detail very soon. It's so fun. Like my family at Thanksgiving or Christmas, hey, like, how's the company going? Yeah. You, know, you left TV news after 15 years. I'm like, yeah, it's going really good. And you know, our YouTube is growing and our, our TikTok's almost at 20,000. Oh, speaking of YouTube, Instagram. thank you. We just passed 5,000 subscribers today. So Yeah, and I, all those numbers are super awesome, but it's like, then I'm like, yeah, we just got a distributor in Australia. Like, they're going to sell our stuff in Australia, and we have two in Canada, and we're in Puerto Rico, and yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's cool that people all over the world are interested in our, in our product. Exactly. And if you're watching from another country and DIY detail isn't there, ask your favorite products distributor to give us a call. We're easy to get a hold of, diydetail.com. And uh, our emails are there, nick at diydetail or ivan at diydetail. And we're happy to entertain distribution worldwide. The Sam Squatch says, I need to ceramic coat a bowling ball. Yes, by all would, means. Would that make it slipperier? Is that... I, you know, obviously, <laughs> I wouldn't, do, I've bowled before, and I wouldn't do it on my main ball. I'd do it on my, you know, the, the older practice ball, just to see what happens. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. You always have good solutions. Uh, loves detail. What's up, Graham, with your sarcastic comments? Love that. <laughs> uh, all right. David Cruz says he would pay to attend. One billion dollars, maybe? Entry? No, Just not kidding. that much. Um, Stephen V says, so I know you guys talked about coming out with waterless. What would be the difference between rinseless and that? That's a good question. Yeah, so a waterless wash is basically, think of it as spray and wipe. So you spray it on the panel, you let it emulsify the dirt, and you wipe it off with a microfiber towel. A lot of people are cringing right now. Now, yeah. a, a rinseless... It seems a little dangerous to Yeah, me. a rinseless is in a bucket. A rinseless, you're still rinsing the car beforehand if you need to or if you want to. I prefer to do it. And then you apply the rinseless, and then you dry. So a rinseless means no rinsing afterwards. Whereas the waterless is a true... Well, there's water in the formula, there's water in everything. But when we say a waterless wash, it is really sprayed on, let it emulsify, wipe it off. And yes, we are working on one. It has a lot of really specific uses, but great uses. So <clears throat> you've taken this beautiful Cadillac to Cars and Coffee. We're talk I think where you're getting, and I just interrupt you, waterless washing is fantastic for like the car show situation. The car show situation, a dealership in their showroom. Yeah. Uh, it's great for touch-up work as well. So 
you've just detailed the car, you notice there's a little smudge that got left or something. The waterless is, the waterless is spectacular for that. So we will be coming out with a waterless wash. It's yeah. kind of a matter of time. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen first, waterless wash or DIY Detail Academy? The waterless wash. Okay. The waterless wash is pretty close to yeah. being, uh, when I say pretty close to being done, it's here. Uh, well, yeah, the formulation's done. We're, I think we're just waiting on labels. Um, well, no, actually, we do a lot of testing. And one of the reasons our products have taken so long, we've been working on this for two years. One of the reasons it takes so long is an example, the waterless wash that's sitting in that bottle there, it's there for a reason. We want to let it sit. We want to let it sit for six months. We've frozen it. We've overheated it. We've done all sorts of weird, <laughs> spectacular things to it that happen in real life. Yeah. Uh, you know, Eddie received uh, a box of rinseless wash, it wasn't ours, but from another company, and it was frozen yeah. when he got it. So he let it thaw, everything was fine. And yeah, I mean, our products can freeze if for some reason it, it happens in the shipping process to a cold area. They can freeze once and thaw out and they're fine. It's just you don't want it to happen 30 times. You know, you don't want to do it daily. So, yeah. But, uh, so yes, the wireless wash is coming. We have other products on the way. We have a, um, uh, one that we're working on that I particularly am fond of is a wax, so a paste wax, that fills. And it fills like crazy. And we're not shy about saying that it fills because there are times when that is needed. Fill up those scratches for that, that date night or whatever. Like, yeah, exactly. I want my car to look good today. Right. I'll, I'll day trade my car's appearance, not to let it degrade or anything, but like if, it, if the scratches are going to appear after a couple washes or whatever later, right. but I can get it looking like today. You're, you're going to the show. You want to win that it. trophy. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about like, these are questions that I have a tough time answering because I feel like they're... They're important to you, but I think that they well, tend to get into the nuance. So it's like DIY uh, detailing made simple. Any ideas on the hardening of your coatings? Does it harden on the paint, uh, but not the applicator? Notice it didn't crystallize on the applicator. And then one no. more question. MD says, how does the DIY ceramic coating compare to C quartz? And it's like, it's yeah. hard for me to. Well, first of all, we're not going to compare it to another brand. Yeah. Uh, it's not our style. We're not here to bash anyone. We're not here to put ourselves above anyone. It's not the thing. As far as the hardening, no, it's not going to harden on your applicator, and for a couple reasons. It's a chemical bond that's happening to the paint. The old style coatings, and you know, 10 years ago, it was very popular to pour a bit of coating on and uh, let it form a little crystal block, and you hold off the crystal block. It's not a thing anymore. Paint is flexible. This whole car is flexing. If you have something that stiff and you know, that crystallizes like that, you're actually going to have a coating that doesn't last as long. So, Very interesting. Yeah. Technology is always evolving. Technology is always getting better. You know, we're not starting our cars with a crank at the front anymore. And the we're good not, old days. Yeah, we're not winding our windows down anymore. Uh, like, some of us are. Yeah, some, uh, some people are. No, but I mean... We're not using a rotary phone. Yeah. yeah we're, we're not using, smoking on planes. No, we're, we're using a rotary <laughs> polisher, though. Uh, yeah. So right. the technology is evolving, and it's changing all the time. And a lot of people were, you know, they're very specific to a brand or a product, and I love this product, I've been using it for 20 years, it may have been a great product 20 years ago, and it may still be a great product. I forgot to wipe the passenger rear wheel. Are we sure about that? Uh, thank you for mentioning Very that. Very possible. Yeah. Um, Ivan, can you answer this question? Yeah. Well, Ceramic coating can go bad? Oh, in Focus Photography says, my buddy wants me to do my wife's new 23 Highlander. Would the, uh, would the uh, 30 mil be enough to cover oh, that side? Oh, definitely. You'll do two Highlanders with 30 mils. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Charles, for mentioning that Nick forgot to do that back wheel. Uh, David Cruz. Oh, wow, ceramic coating. The ceramic coating can go bad. Yes, a ceramic coating can go bad over time. Not once it's on your paint, but in the bottle, if you leave the bottle open too long, that chemical reaction that happens with humidity, because they're humidity cured, that is going to be a problem. Uh, orthodoxy is truth. Uh, why do some coatings harden on the applicator and some don't? Already went over that. Uh, one more, can you do it one more time? Sometimes redundancy is a good, is a good thing. Yeah, well, it might have been the one we were answering before. No, it wasn't. Okay, so anyways, uh, what was the question again? I, I why skipped. do some coatings harden on the applicator or right. others don't? Uh, older technology, first of all. Uh, secondly, it's just the, the carrier resins they're using. So... Seeing the gleam off the Cadillac makes me want to get a polisher and ceramic coating and treat my ride. Well, definitely, Ruben, go for it. Ruben, uh, you can do it, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, 
this process, I don't want to call it dummy simple, but it, it's like... If you can wax a car, you can apply a coating. Yeah, and we have so many videos on YouTube on like, you know, we have the Fiat series and the Jeep series, like how to ceramic coat your car. Yeah. And I mean, the steps are pretty simple. It's like, you, you, you do an all-purpose cleaner, you know, all clean on the wheels. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you foam down the car with rinseless wash or incredible suds. You do the contact wash. Right. You do iron remover with the clay towel to remove the embedded contaminants. You rinse off the car, yeah, and then you go ahead and polish. Right. And we use Ivan's really simple polishing system with the gold standard. That pad, that polish, just released on DIYDetail.com. You quickly wipe down with your towel with a little panel prep on it. Make sure we everything need, is squeaky clean. We need to speed clean. up here. We got a lot of comments. I know. And yeah. then and then you you do the ceramic coating, baby. Yeah. It's so, easy. Uh, Louis is. Lewis, is it you can't handle the stress. <laughs> yeah, is it safe to clay with a towel and rinseless wash? Or are we not inducing some swirls? No, the rinseless wash with the proper clay towel. So, and actually, we want to soak that one too. Oh, okay. Uh, so, with the rinseless wash, clay towel, and even you know iron remover or quick beads as your additional lubrication, you're not going to be inducing swirls in the vehicle if you do it properly. Meaning, no pressure. Uh, take it easy. Keep flipping your towel. Eddie uh, mentions that yes, his supplies were all frozen, all eight of them. Uh, How are they holding up, Eddie? I hope they're fine for you. Yeah. Uh, Carl, uh, just ordered the gold standard polish today. So excited to try it out this spring. Excellent. Uh, loves detailing. True professionals. Thank you, Graham. Thanks, so are Graham. you. you really uh, are. Will Overkill. Waterless wash would be also great for do-it-yourselfers who use touchless tunnel washes at the final wipe. Exactly. Excellent. Honestly, I did a video about this too, though. Ceramic gloss is Does phenomenal. a great job for that, So yeah. you come out of the tunnel wash, you have a plush towel, we sell plenty of them on DIYDetail.com, it's under the towel section, and just a bottle of ceramic gloss. Spray it on your paint, spray it on your towel, look for those drips, boom, shiny protection, yep. really easy. Uh, in focus photography, thanks, we'll order a bottle for his car and do it in a few weeks. Excellent. Heck yeah. Uh, Tom Kirby, thanks for the live session, thanks for joining us Tom, and we'll see you in Orlando. Man, Ivan's much better, he's very fast with the answering. Loves detailing supplies. Hello Sylvie. Sylvie's off somewhere. Uh, Alfred's Auto Spa, DIY detail. Would you consider releasing more concentrates of your products? All clean is concentrated in a gallon. Would be interested in concentrated the tire dressing and interior clean and protect. Those are about as concentrated as we can make without getting product separation. And that is one of the issues. We don't like to see bottles of our product half separated and then people having to mix them and all that stuff. It's just, what happens it's when, What happens when, when you have uh, more user, there's greater chance for user error essentially. Yeah. Like some people have had an issue with quick beads and I, we say, well, did you shake the bottle first? Yeah. Uh, did you apply it on a wet car? No, no. Yeah. Did you rinse it off quickly? No, I put it on, it just, the instructions are important, but like the more chance there are for user error, yeah. the more we're going to have to step in and help. But we wanted this to just work for you guys the first time. Speaking of working, Eric, does Incredible Suds actually do some cleaning when you foam it on? Yes. That's yes, what it's for. Absolutely. It's got a pH of 8.5, which is safe for waxes and sealants, obviously safe for coatings, but it does clean. It does emulsify the dirt and break it down. Marcus Doyle, getting my buddy into detailing his truck, going to walk him through the rinseless wash this weekend using... Our rinseless wash and ceramic gloss. Next step, ceramic coating. Excellent, Marcus. You're a real true friend. Uh, Tom, and it's such an easy system to learn too. Yeah, and uh, Tom Kirby, thank you, Tom, says those of you watching, remember to hit the like button and subscribe. Yeah, if you're not subscribed, now's the time. Uh, Carolina's Auto Detailing. Can't wait to try the new polish and pads. Excellent. Uh, Alfred's Auto Spa. If chemistry for products supported it, I guess it's a. An extension question. An extension, yeah. I don't remember what the question was. Before. So orthodoxy is truth, saying I heard it. Thanks, Ryan L. Don't be afraid. It can't be. It can all be undone and fixed relatively easy. So yes, if you do make an error other than burning through paint, but even that can be fixed. That's an expensive fix. Yeah. I don't want to just no, no, jump but, over that one. But any other, you know, like a yeah. ceramic coating, if you leave a high spot and you notice it three weeks later, not a big deal. You can polish it off. Uh, Dini. Got my holiday package last week and love everything. I went with rinseless and love it. The box came as, uh, the box it came in was a fortress. Yes, we don't like having damages. We don't like getting the email or the, the note from someone saying, I got my products, but they're all damaged. We really don't like that. That honestly depresses me. Because yeah. if I had bought that, it would be like, oh man, I spent my hard-earned money on this. And it, so in the case of that, just send us an email and uh, a photo of it and we'll get it out. Usually uh, same day or next day. Yeah. So in focus photography, I hate winter. 
hey, I'm with you on that one. Oh, uh, yeah, real quick. Ivan doesn't just hate winter. Like, he needs it like Bahamas, you know, 90 degrees in here. And I'm over here telling him about how I'm like enjoying cold showers and, you know, cold plunges. And yeah. Ivan uses expletives to say uh, <laughs> yeah, how no. silly that sounds. Yeah, no, so, anyways. From uh, in Canada, apparently. You know, yes. Who knew? So, in focus photography, I hate winter. I have DIY rinseless my Camaro in the garage, even though it hasn't moved in two months, just to get my kicks in. Hey, thanks. Yeah, it's, you got to do that, man. And even if your spouse you, thinks you're crazy. And while you're doing that, add a bit of ceramic gloss. Uh, razors, is, is it a Cadillac? Yes, it's a Cadillac. It looks awesome inside. I love it. Big Car Killer. Are these products available in Australia? Not yet, but they're on the water and they're going to Car Care Co. So find your local Car Care Co. distributor. You'll find them there. That sounded like a commercial, like uh, find your local Car Care Co. distributor. Hey, well, that's who we are. I know. Uh, Eddie Cologne, DIY Detail, appreciate everything you all do. It was fun hanging out and everyone else stay blessed. I'm having to be part of this great community. Nick, Absolutely keep both. the stash going. Ivan, smell test for life. No. Uh, Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> detailing made simple, stay safe. Alfred Auto Spa, Eddie. So everybody's saying goodbye to Eddie. A very popular guy, by the way. And if you're not subscribed Eddie's to Eddie's- Eddie's hilarious. I looked yeah. at his channel recently. I'm like, you got to get this guy more subscribers. He's got, right. he's got a personality. You know? So yeah, detailing made simple and uh, uh, Eddie Cologne, definitely go give them a thumbs up. Go give them a subscribe. They deserve it. Oh, you know, Lad, we put a YouTube short up today. Lad, Mr. Lad. Mr. Yeah. Lad on YouTube. Also, I think, is it Millions Reflection or what's his name? Yeah, business? Million Reflections. Million Reflections. He had such a fun tip about quick beads. Do you right. want to explain kind of his tip on quick beads? So we on, gave him a shout out, by the way. If you got some ideas for us, we'll, we'll shout you out on YouTube or yeah. any social media. Exactly. So basically, instead of having a wet car, applying quick beads, and then rinsing it off, he sprays the quick beads in the stream of his pressure washer. So it immediately reacts on the panel. You can see, it's not just water in the face, you can see the froth hitting the panel. Yeah, exactly. And you always say, like, apply the quick beads on a wet panel, and then rinse it off. And when you rinse it, you want to rinse it until that white froth yeah. goes away. Right. But you see the white froth immediately yeah. on the paint with the quick beads and the pressure washer. So we've dubbed it the Mr. Lad method, so should you. That's uh, a, it's a good one. Folks are coming up with custom like mixes of your chemicals and techniques. You know, that, I feel like you're building a culture. I love that. Now this is a question for you from David Cruz. What do you mean by a high spot? What do you mean by a high spot? It's where there's too much coating and it's left on the paint. So Ivan can explain it better, but it's like, it looks like an oil slick on water and the coating, it's not bonding in there anymore. It's, it's just excess. So you just want to essentially just wipe it off. And Eric says, uh, Ivan, don't let Nick make fun of the red shoes. They look awesome. Nick's wearing red shoes, too. So. I mean, you know, so you got you to keep it classy with the Vans. Ivan yeah. got his red Pumas. I'm like, I got to have red, too. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, so the Sam Squatch. I ordered another sponge. It's phenomenal. But my grandpa wants one. Thank you for doing this for us. Have a great deal of support from everyone. You have a great deal of support from everyone. And thank you. you. Sam Squatch, actually, I don't think there's a video we put out that he hasn't commented on, which is great. It's great interaction. And his story is very touching to me. He details with his grandfather. How cool is that? Yeah. Like I'm a dad and I've heard being a grandpa is like just profound, like super yeah. awesome. And being able to spend time with your grandkid, I'm sure is fantastic. And doing it with detailing, you know, like once you get the detailing bug, you get it, but the rest of the world doesn't quite understand it. So exactly. that's pretty special. Yeah, uh, Brian Rival, hello Ivan and Nick. Will there be a membership program in the future? There is kind of. We're working on that. We're just getting the final details. So if you are a detailer and you own a detailing business and you are interested in buying our products at quantity, we do have a program. It's not listed online. Send us a DM. Um, there are discounts available and it just involves certain yeah. commitments on amount. Yeah. Um, and so then you're going to see a pretty steep discount. Ivan, a DIY detail or Nick, a DIY detail. Was that too much? Was that okay? No, that's okay. good. Yeah. yeah. So there are discounts if you want to buy in bulk, and we have the details of what that looks like. And we've had, I think, about five people sign up. It's not listed yeah. online. It's sort of as detailers ask us, hey, I'm a professional, and I like your lineup. Like, I'd like to buy this in, in greater quantities than just a gallon. Do you have like a, a discount? We certainly do. It's uh, uh, unofficially called the Detailer's Dropship Program. And yeah. it's a whole thing. Anyway, send us a message. We'll let you know about it. So in focus photography, oh, I'm finally almost out of my first bottle of ceramic gloss. So by spring, we'll be breaking into the second bottle. Oh, nice. So ceramic gloss goes a long way. It lasts you a long time. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh my gosh, I'm sorry I'm yawning. Um, I saw Detailing Made Simple, I believe, talk about using ceramic gloss on the nav screen and the rear view window, uh, mirror, sorry. Yeah. Um, Excellent. It's great, you know, it just makes those areas a lot easier to clean later on. So there's off-label usages for ceramic gloss that I yeah. think are pretty amazing. Exactly. I use it on my uh, bathroom glass sometimes. Yeah. What? On some of the stainless steel, um, you know, things around my house because it's just easy to use. Right. It's good and it works. Chris is loving the rinse list. Smells like a green Jolly Rancher. Actually, it's a green apple scent. But, but a never, green apple Jolly Rancher. I've never had a Jolly oh, Rancher. It's, so. it's spot on. It's a great Okay, adventure. very good. Uh, the Sam Squatch agrees with us that Eddie has a phenomenal YouTube channel, so look for Eddie Cologne on YouTube. Eddie does a lot of like yeah. close to the camera, goofy. You know, yeah, it's he's, good. Just, he's having fun. You can yeah. tell the guy is having fun. Yeah. Uh, loves detailing supplies. Does the ceramic gloss get shiny as time goes by? It's got about a 24 hour real cure time. It's immediately clear, you know, skinned as you put it on. But yes, it does get shinier over those first 24 hours. I have experienced that it becomes a lot slicker one hour after application. Yeah. So um, you guys will experience that as well. So Dini is going for supper. He's grabbing Thai, have a great meal. Well, I could use like some, some pad, some pad Thai. Yeah, right so uh, Michael yeah. with the suds. Yes, we have suds. We have incredible suds. Incredible suds. Someone recently responded like, oh, DIY detail with another Suds video. foaming video. I'm like, man, you can never get too much foam. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we we'll can even foam foaming. our rinseless. We'll do, we'll do foaming with a purpose from now on. We'll yeah, Make exactly. sure it's not just yeah. agreed. It's just, uh, yeah. Uh, the Sam Squatch. True story. My grandpa has troubles with his lungs, so I handle the smells. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, Rinseless is phenomenal, and I'm actually colorblind, so he handles the coordination by color. That is teamwork. That is just spectacular. I'm uh, just looking at this lighting setup, Ivan. You yep. did a phenomenal job. I don't know if folks have seen it yet, but... Well, I didn't do the job. Sylvie and I did Sylvie the job. Sylvie and you yeah, did the Yeah, job. exactly. It's a teamwork thing. Uh, Sam Squatch, I want to wish everyone a good evening. Nick, the stash is perfection. Ivan oh, and Sylvie, you're you. always a joy to watch. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. And we're about to, you know, call it a... We've been at this for about an hour now. We appreciate everybody tuning in on Friday. Yeah, there's still 63 people watching. Oh my gosh, that's like more than there were earlier. Yeah, so um, Jeff C., why do polymer-based rinseless washes not release the dirt from the microfiber, but surfactant-based rinseless like yours do? Actually, ours is a polymer uh, surfactant hybrid, but it's just the, the way the polymer encapsulates the dirt there's no surfactants. The surfactant is there to break apart the dirt, to emulsify it better. So that's why our rinseless always looks a little milky. Not yeah. milky, but you know, it looks like something is floating in there, and actually it isn't. But the, you know, the heavy stuff is emulsified, taken to the bottom, or you know, it's broken down, broken down, taken to the bottom. But yes, the, the polymer, the pure polymer rinseless and the pure surfactant rinseless are two very opposing things that end up doing a great job either way. Ours is a hybrid of both. Our chemist worked very hard on this. Uh, you know, to me, this was, the rinseless was a very important product, obviously, and that was part of my, my needs in developing this rinseless, is I wanted one that cleaned the wash media properly, because that's always been a bug of mine with any other rinseless, that the wash media doesn't come out of the water clean. And one thing that we're seeing online as folks, you know, review our product is they're just like, your rinseless wash is a powerful cleaner. It's as powerful, if not more powerful, than every rinse I've ever used. And uh, we love to see that. And I love the smell as well. Uh, Dini says, it's my name day in Bulgaria today. Hey, excellent. Okay. Well, thank you. I don't know what that means. Name day, like birthday? It could be Ivan Day. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, Ivan Day would be a big deal, I feel like. So Armando, so loving the interior ceramic coating. I went crazy with it, applied about half the bottle on everything in my new Tesla Y. Oh, you heck may, yeah. You may have over-applied a little bit, but nonetheless... So Nick says there's no such thing. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. but you're going to have a very well-protected uh, Model Y. What color did you get, by the way? Uh, the, uh, Michael, I was wondering if you could recommend a budget-friendly pressure washer. I purchased one and used it. Uh, budget-friendly pressure washer. Get something that you can get at the, you know, the hardware store or whatever. You don't need to get an expensive pressure washer. Yes, they're maybe a little quieter, but get something that, you know, between 1,000, 1,200 PSI, and you'll be fine. Would you go to, like, Tractor Supply and spend 300 bucks to get, like, the insurance, or would you just get, like, the $150 Sun Joe off Amazon, right? I, mean, I guess those are, like, two questions, and, and there's 4 million other possibilities, but... Yeah. 
I know that you can get insurance possibly or, you know, any kind yeah, of... Yeah, no. Is that worth it? No, not really. No. Yeah. What are they going to do? Who are you going to... What technician is going to take a look at that? And I mean, are they going to warranty it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, tend to ramble a bit. Yeah. As the evening wears on. Uh, Stephen V, Nick and Ivan, thanks for everything. Have a great night. Caesar. Likewise to you. Thank Carolina's you. Auto Detail, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Uh, Jen Key... Ken Jeeper, sorry, haha, ha, was hoping Jeff would ask that question. Very good. Uh, Dini, anything with high GPM, yeah, the higher the gallons per minute, the easier the washing becomes. One thing you're going to find with the cheap pressure washers that will be annoying is the hose. So when you start to upgrade or you get a, a new hose, because they just, they're so tight and they kink yeah. in these circles and you're trying to pull them out. And so um, a high quality hose, I think, is my favorite part of sort of the upgrading in the pressure washer game. So, uh, Michael, the spray foamer you recommend, uh, but didn't get the s same results as you guys with the 1.1 orifice, that could be the pressure washer or the gallons per minute of your pressure washer. And also the water quality. So if you have a, a high total dissolved solvent or, uh, solids in your water, that is going to actually reduce the foam slightly. Really? Yeah. So. Mind blown. Little things. Uh, yeah, we, re we don't even sponsored. We don't even carry it on a website, but... Uh, we really love the MJJC foam cannon. It just has worked exceptionally well to give us that yeah. lather. And we have stuff. the version 3.0 on the way, so we'll give that one a try. It's a secret. Yeah. Apparently, uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it's got a wider base, doesn't fall on the ground. I don't know. We looked at the specs, it looks yeah. fun, so we. Yeah, we'll have fun. Uh, McShaky Cheese. How much trial and error goes into dialing in DIY detail product lines? How much testing goes into each product? A lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not. It ain't cheap either to do yeah. it because you're trying to do it right. We're not like guessing and putting something out and like, well, yeah. hope this works, right? Like, yeah. Because if we do that, uh, you only have one shot at you know credibility and a first impression. So right, like you said, we've been working on this a couple of years. Yeah, and it's the time involved as well. You know, some of the one of the tests is put it on the shelf for six months. That's a test. And you know, what does it look like after that? Has it separated and you know, is it clumpy? Is it doing all sorts of weird things? And we've had formulas that have done that. So, you know, we check them every month. And it's like, oh, no, this one's gone. Okay, back to the lab. Um, what else we got, Ivan? So, uh, Stoyan Korvashev is saying, yay, happy Ivan Day. Indeed, it's your name day. Hey, great. Uh, breakfast lover, what's the best way to clean interior gloss black plastics without scratching it? Breakfast lover. I love breakfast as well. Yeah. I'd like to know what breakfast lover's favorite breakfast is. And if you have a breakfast suggestion for Nick or Ivan, leave them in the comments below. Yeah. I think it's the most important meal of the day. I like uh, eggs and bacon okay. for my breakfast. Okay. So we're talking about the piano black trim. Right. Exactly. Uh, it's going to scratch if you look at it. I mean, I just grab yourself a nice plush microfiber and rinseless wash or interior clean and protect. Yeah. And just be super gentle with it. What I would also do is if you have little dirt particles on there, uh, blow them off, you know, use a, a leaf blower or a master blaster or yep. preferably an air compressor. You don't want to drive any of those dirt particles into that little surface uh, with your rag. So make sure it's free of any large debris. Uh, you could pre-spray lightly, you know, unless there's like electronic clusters around there, then you want to be really careful. Uh, just a very plush towel, yeah, you know. Exactly. And it, it's, it's tough because they aren't going to stay scratch free. That's just the reality. If you're using that car, you know, good yeah. luck. And Armando, he's got a black Tesla, and he has kids. So, yeah, you used half a bottle. That might be wise. Good uh, job, Armando. Yeah. Uh, Terry Michaels, is pressure washer required to clean a car when pre-rinsing before using rinses? No. You can use a hose. No. You don't need a pressure washer. A pressure washer is a nice thing to have. It is not a necessity. Although I will tell you, it's not a necessity. For me, it's the arches of the, of the wheel wells. I mean, yeah. that's, where, that's where having a pressure washer is super critical. I think other than that... You don't need one. Yeah. Uh, David Cruz, have a great day. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching, David. Loves detailing the supplies. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. MD, thanks for answering my question, guys. Also been waiting a while for the gold standard, so have we. Uh, ordering a bottle now. Thank you very much. Love it. Thank you. Dini, uh, thought I was the only one that had that air dries my microfiber and hand washes my towels, apparently. Hand washes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Hand Wash. In focus photography. Have a good night. And now we're at the end of the list. So, All right, let's call it a night. It's yep. six o'clock. Nick's hangry. We love you guys. Uh, Thank you very much. Go check out the Gold Standard Polish System. Check us out, DIYDetail.com. Have an amazing weekend. We'll see you soon.